Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Selenium Tech Automation. In this today tutorial, I'm going to discuss about what are conditional statements and iteration statements we can have in Java. Okay, so what are all the different conditional statements and iteration statements in Java? Okay, first we will discuss about what is conditional statements and later we will see about what is iteration statements. Okay, what are iteration statements? Sorry, so first in that, so first we will discuss about what are conditional statements here. Okay, for example, if I want to compare any two values in Java, so during that time we are going to use these conditional statements, right? So if I want to compare any va any two values in Java, we are using conditional statements. Okay, so these conditional statements allow Java uh, Java Virtual Machine to execute a block of instructions. Okay, these conditional statements allow Java Virtual Machines to execute a block of instructions. Okay, so for that you can see here there are uh, two conditional statements in Java. The first one is if condition and the second one is switch condition. Okay, first we will discuss about if condition. So let me open my Eclipse here. Okay, so this is our if conditional statement. So let me little zoom. Okay, first you can see here. So what is a if conditional statement here? If condition will execute a single statement at a time. Okay, with the help of if condition, we can execute only single statement at a time. Okay, so you can see here, okay, with the help of if condition, we can execute only single statement at a time. Okay, for that, I have created a class here that is if conditional inside that a public static void main method. So inside that, I initialized a variable called integer a equals to 5. Okay, integer a equals to 5. So, as we discussed now, if I want to compare any two values in Java, we are going to use these conditional statements. Okay, in that conditional statements, I am going to use the conditional statement called if. Okay, so now this is the example for if conditional statement. So, in that way, I am using here if my initialized variable, integer type variable a equals to 5. Okay, so then this block is going to be execute mean that if condition is going to be execute now okay so here i am comparing two values with the help of this conditional statement called if conditional statement okay so with the help of this if condition i am going to compare this integer variable that is a double equals to 5 okay so if these two got match so then automatically we will get some system dot dot interland statement called if block executed okay if i am if I if I am uh, not passing any uh, thing here, like if I am changing the value, okay. If I am changing the value to six here, so then you can see here what will be the output. Okay. First, let me compare with the same value. Like this time, this a value and what I am passing here both are same. So that's why it is going to be execute our if block statement now. Okay. Let me execute. You can see. Okay. If block executed. So now I am going to change this value to 6. So during this time what will happen? It won't give any console part. Okay. For this reason we are going to use one more else block. Okay. That is called else block. Right. So for that I am going to write an else block here. Okay. I am going to write an else block. So where you will get if that if block is not executed then automatically that else block is going to be executed now. Okay. If the condition returns true here. If the condition returns true here, then only this if block is going to be executed. Okay. If the condition return will false, I mean if the condition is returning false means then only that else block is going to be executed. Okay. So for that I am going to add one more else block. Okay. For that I am going to add one else block here. Okay. Else block. So then I am printing the statement means else block got executed. Else block got executed because the condition is failing here if I pass 6 here now this 5 is not equals to 6 so that's why this time this else block is going to be execute now okay if I pass the correct value only here that 5 equals to 5 then our if block is going to be executed if the condition is not matching with this condition then automatically this else block is going to be executed okay first let me execute we will see yeah, the condition got matched here. So that's why it is returning you the, it is printing you the if block got executed. So then if I change this to 6, so now 5 double equals to 6. Okay, the condition got failed here. The condition is false. So that's why 
else block is going to be executed now okay so let me execute yeah you can see here else block got executed which means so whenever we are going to compare two values so during that time we are going to use conditional statement okay that is called if conditional statement and switch case conditional statement okay with the help of if condition just now we compared two values so if the condition got true then only our if condition block is going to be executed if our condition is false then only this else block is going to be executed okay so after this next we will see how a nested if else will looks like okay how a nested if block will looks like not nested if else how a nested if block is going to be we are going to uh, see now okay so now I am going to add one more if condition here instead of if else okay so let me remove this one okay this is for okay, let me comment this is for if else right this is for if else okay this is for if else block statements okay this is for if else block statements so now I am going to comment these three lines okay so now I am going to use nested if here okay so now we initialized a variable and also I am going to initialize one more variable that is j equals to sorry b equals to any variable you can take b equals to 10 for example okay 5 and 10 okay now I am comparing this a equals to 10 for example this is 5 okay in our case this is 5 if a double equals to 5 then I am going to do one more if condition here okay now I am going to add one more if condition here so now I am going to compare okay now I am going to compare b equals to 10 okay so now if I will do like this what will happen here first time my condition got satisfied here that is 5 equals to 5 so that's why it is going inside this if that is called nested if so again it is going to compare here that is if b equals to 10 yes that condition is true then it will print you the if block is executed okay that is nested if block got executed right nested if block executed so now let me run okay here you can see first time it is comparing these two values with the integer variable a equals to 5 then 5 double equals to 5 condition true so then it is going for one more if condition inside this if okay that is called nested if if this condition is satisfied then automatically it is going to check in one more if condition that is called nested if so again this checking here if b equals to 10 yes the condition is true that's why it is printing with the nested if block got executed okay what will happen if i add one more else block here okay we already added so now I am going to change that value to 20 inside this if condition a equals to 5 ok so this time what will happen it will execute else block because the condition got false here ok because 5 is not equals to 10 so that's why else block is executing currently ok this is how this if conditional statement is going to be work and also this is how this nested if conditional statement is going to work so now we will see about switch case conditional statement okay now we will see about switch case conditional statement okay so now we will see about switch case uh, switch case conditional statement okay what is this switch, switch case conditional statement here okay with the help of this switch case statement we can check multiple conditions at a time okay we can check multiple conditions at a time right so for example here I am doing integer i equals to 7 I initialized a variable of type integer data type then value is 7 ok so now I am going to use switch case ok what is a switch here it is a conditional statement where it will check the multiple conditions ok it is a conditional statement where it will check the multiple conditions at a time ok so for that I created this switch condition here so inside that I am passing my data type that is called i initialized variable i integer of data type i so i assigned one value to this i that is 7 okay in first case i am going to print the value as selenium if this switch i equals to 7 okay i equals to 7 then i am going to print this value 
okay again if it is not matching here again it will go for one more time now this i value will increase to 2 so then again it will go for the case 2 okay so again it will take the value from here that is take if 2 is not equals to 7 right 2 is not equals to 7 so then again this i will become 3 so likewise it will keep on iterating till this condition is going to be matched and it will print you the respected case output okay for example <coughs> for example let me add uh, one more case statement here one more case here okay let me add one more case that is case number seven right that is case number seven okay that is case number seven so here i'm going to change it to s d e t okay s date so now what will happen here seven i value seven and our case is also seven okay so now if i executed it will it will print you the s date right s date by defaultly this default will also execute okay by defaultly this default statement is also be executed so that's why it is an optional here for switch case statement if any one of the case is not satisfied with our condition then automatically this default statement is going to be execute right so here so let me remove all the break statements here if you want to terminate that execution i mean that conditional from uh, that time so we can use here break statement okay so it will terminate if that condition is not satisfied then it will print you the default statement if none of the condition is satisfied okay but i want to continue but i want to continue till the last statement okay so now let me execute default will also execute automatically so now i am going to remove this default statement here so now we will see the output it will print you the s date okay if i want to add default irrespective dependency about this ith value i want to print some message so we can print that message with the help of default statement but i don't want the default statement to be executed so that's why i removed here so now it is going to be checked here okay so now with the help of default statement we can see okay with the help of default statement how it will work okay now this condition is not going to be true because i mentioned here eighth value as eight but we have only seven cases only but eight case is missing so again this seven equals to eight that condition is failed right so we don't have any seven equals to eight case number here so that's why it will print you the default that is none of the above because that value is not present inside this switch case statement right so this is how this switch case will work okay this is how our switch case, uh, switch case statement will work here okay <coughs> so these are the two conditional statements where we can use if you want to compare two values okay that's why we are using here the conditional statements so now we will see about what are the different iterational statements here okay what are the different iteration statements we can have the first one here is for loop iteration statement the second one here is while loop iteration statement and the last one here is do while loop iteration statement first we will see about one by one okay first i will discuss about for loop statement so for that let me create a class called as for loop okay for loop statement okay for loop statement right for loop statement okay so now public static void main okay got created now okay let me delete this commented lines okay so now what is this iterational statement okay what are all the different kinds of iteration statement and mainly what is an iteration statement here a group of statements executed repeatedly or more number of times okay a group of statements which are going to be executed repeatedly and also at the same time which are going to be executed more number of times so during that time we are going to use this iteration statements called for loop while loop and do while loop okay a group of statements where it is going to be executed repeatedly at the same time more number of times okay repeatedly or more number of times so during that time we are going to use these iterational statements called for loop statement while loop statement and do while loop statement 
okay first we will see about for loop statement okay first we will see about for loop iteration statement for that what is the syntax here okay let me add a one for loop here okay add one for loop statement okay now let me okay let me add one for loop statement here so what is the syntax for that one for loop okay for loop for okay this is a syntax so first we need to initialization a variable okay this part is called as initialization part so after that we need to mention a condition okay after that we need to mention a condition after mentioning the condition we need to provide increment or decremental okay incremental or decremental okay this is the syntax for for loop right this is a syntax for for loop so after this okay after this i am going to write some statements here right after that i am going to write uh, write some statements here statement 1 okay in the same way statement 2 in the same way statement 3 so inside for loop we can have many statements okay in the for loop we are going to first what is our first parameter here that is initialization we need to initialize a variable for that variable we are going to mention some condition based upon the statements our initialized variable is going to be incremented or decremented okay initialized statement is going to be incremented or decremented okay so now so now first let me open this print all tables program here okay print all tables program here you can see here okay you can see here first what i am doing here I initialized a variable that is called number and also I assigned a variable to that uh, variable value as 2 okay so then it is an integer type of variable and I assigned a value that is 2 so later we mention some condition here okay so the same way so let me copy this one so that it will be easy for you okay so let me copy from here to here okay so now go back to our for loop okay now go back to our for loop right so here this is our syntax okay what i am showing here the first line of uh, for loop statement this is our syntax so accordingly i am going to add one for loop here okay so now one more is missing here okay so now you can see we initialized first the syntax is initialization yes we initialized a integer type variable that is number and we are assigning one value that is two so after that we are going to mention some condition here that is number is less than or equals to 100 after that we are going to increment the condition based upon the steps okay based upon the statements we are going to increase or decrease the condition okay so that's why i first I initialized a variable number equals to 2 number less than or equals to 100 then number plus plus so if 2 is less than or equals to 100 condition is satisfied here that is 2 is less than or equals to 100 that is true so then what will happen it will come inside one more for loop here so after that i am taking one more initialized variable of type integer so that is 1 okay after that 1 is less than or equals to 10 Okay, that condition is satisfied here 1 is less than or equal to 10 1 it will come now here 1 okay initially the number value is 2 here okay so now 2 into here we can see we are taking the 2 okay after that we are taking this i value as 1 so now I am going to multiply 2 into i i value is 1 so now it is going to print the 2 into 1 what is the value okay here 2 into 1 what is the value equals to 2 so likewise once it is done again it will go to here then i will become 2 here so now the condition is 2 is less than or equals to 10 condition is satisfied so now this ith value will change here that is 2 but our number is here 2 only so likewise it will keep on iterating till this value so once it got maximize the value that is 11 less than or equal to 10 then condition false again this number will increase by one more 
number that is 3 it will become so again i equals to 1 i less than or equals to 10 condition is true so then again it will take the 3 into 1 so likewise it will keep on printing the table still 100th table okay so that's how this for loop is going to be work okay so here okay this is the syntax for for loop okay for initialization of the variable so then we are going to mention the condition and we are going to mention incrementing or decrementing okay and one more here is and one more here is okay and one more here is this is an optional okay this statement is an optional here for example let me delete these two okay here this is an optional this integer we can de uh, define outside of this for loop also this is an optional okay this integer is an optional in this statement okay here integer variable is an optional okay is an optional we can mention this with the help of semicolon also only blank only you can pass it will work okay now you can see okay now you can see here okay now i am going to initialize a variable here okay int i equals to 10 okay so now int i equals to 10 so now i less than or equals to 5 right i less than 5 for example i less than 5 so thereafter this is i plus plus okay now you can see that's why it is an optional here this i value integer of type i variable is an optional okay we can define our for loop like this also it will behave like the same only okay and also we can mention in a different way also okay and also we can different uh, we can define this okay now i am going to print system dot order print ln selenium tech automation okay this is our statement so now it is going to be print okay now this is going to be print like okay now i am going to take this value as zero okay so we can define for loop in this way also and this is also one way by initializing one variable of data type any data type and also this is also one more way where we can define that integer i outside of this for loop so inside this for loop we can define only semicolon that is an optional to define initialization part okay so now if i execute it will print to the selenium tech automation five times you can see here it printed the selenium tech automation five times okay at the same time i can take this value inside this one also okay both will work the same only okay both will work like the same only so now let me execute this one it will print you the same result sorry sorry let me comment okay so now if i execute this program it will print you the same okay so this is also one approach without mentioning the initialization part also we can okay we can define like this so there is one more optional way okay so now let me comment all this and i will show you one more optional way to define for loop okay so now we done with two options okay two ways to define for loop so now the third way here is so now i am going to take int i equals to zero again okay so after that i am going to write for sorry for syso of selenium tech for example tech automation okay selenium tech automation so after that okay after that i am going to mention my condition here after that i am going to increment okay i am going to do some increment okay so thereafter i am going to mention syso of automation okay we can define in this way also so let me execute you can see here first it is printing selenium tech automation so then it is going to be execute it is going to print this automation five times here 
okay in this way also we can define for loop okay in this three ways we can easily define the for loop okay these are the three different ways to implement the for loop for iteration statements okay this is how we can implement the for loop in multiple ways okay if you doesn't provide any condition by defaultly it is going to be take infinite only okay for example for example i define one condition here that is i less than 5 right so now i am not going to define any condition here so you don't get any error so but it will execute infinite times okay it will execute infinite times you can see in the console it is going to print infinite times okay so this is also one one way to run our for loop okay so here you can see it is not going to stop okay so so now we are going to mention one conditional statement here one condition so if we mention condition it is going to be execute five times here okay we can return the for loop without condition also but if you don't mention any conditional means by defaultly this for loop will execute infinite times okay by defaultly this uh, for loop is going to be execute infinite times so and also there is one more way i will show you there is one more way to define for loop i will show you that one as well now okay so now i am going to take one for loop okay one for loop int i equals to zero here okay so after that i less than five okay so now i am not going to mention any increment or decrement here so i am going to just mention CISO statement here that is selenium tech automation okay selenium tech automation right selenium tech automation okay so after that i am going to close my bracket okay so now inside the for loop i am going to one second it is giving some error here okay here uh, okay because of this it is giving error okay so now i am not going to mention any incremental operation inside our for loop oh, but i can mention that inside the for loop that is statement part i can mention okay for that so i am going to print okay for that i am going to print selenium with java okay so now i am going to mention my incremental operation here okay i am going to mention my incremental operation here so now what it will do it will execute five times okay now you can see selenium tech automation selenium tech automation five times it is going to be print okay selenium with java selenium tech automation again second time selenium with java selenium tech automation again the i value become three selenium with java selenium automation again the i become four selenium with java selenium tech automation again the i become five selenium with java selenium tech automation okay this is how we can uh, define our for loop in multiple ways okay this is how we can define our for loop in multiple ways okay so either could be work fine okay so this is how we can mention the for loop in different different ways without mentioning that condition and also without mentioning any iteration statement inside that for loop and also without mentioning any initialization variable okay so we can achieve this for loop in all the different different ways this is how we can achieve this for loop this is how we can implement for loop in different ways okay so after this i am going to uh, as we discussed now so first we look now just now we uh, done with our for loop so what is our next loop that is called as while loop okay that is called as while loop here okay so while while loop is also a iteration statement it is used to iterate okay it is used to iterate right so it, it is also working like a the same like for loop only so now we are going to see about while loop first of all what is this for loop here okay what is this for loop it is an iteration statement a group of statements executed repeatedly or more number of times okay here while loop also will do the same like a group of statements will execute it repeatedly 
or more number of times with the help of while loop also we can achieve that one okay now let me discuss about while loop okay how we can okay here okay here what is a while loop here first of all the block of statements repeatedly for an unknown number of times until the specified condition returns false but whereas for loop means whereas for loop what's the difference between these two whereas for loop what it will do okay whereas for loop what it will do here a group of statements executed repeatedly or more number of times but when it comes to while loop the block of statements repeatedly for unknown number of times we don't know the condition okay during that time okay during that time we are going to use for loop Ch sorry uh, during the term we are going to use while loop until the specified condition is returning the false okay so first we will see the syntax okay first we will see the syntax for while loop okay how the while loop will looks like we will see now okay syntax is int first i am initializing one variable that is int i equals to 10 that is called as initialization okay that is called as initialization okay we initialized one variable that is called i equals to 10 right so now i am going to use while loop here okay while iterate with iterator while iterate with enumeration okay so now i am going to iterate right sorry so now i am going to use this while loop right so here so let me remove all this okay <coughs> so now delete this one as well okay so now we used this while loop here okay so after this i need to mention the condition here right that is i less than or equals to 5 for example okay so here i am taking this i value as 0 okay so now the help of while i mentioned some condition here i less than or equals to 5 so then i am going to write some block of statements inside this while while loop right so for that system dot out dot print ln okay system dot out dot print ln of ith value i'm going to print so this is called as block of statements okay these are called as block of statements right these are called as block of statements so after this i'm going to increment my i value until that condition is going to be written false so it will execute until this condition is going to be false right so first it will start from 0 is less than or equal to 5 condition true it will print you the ith value what is the value and again it will go and it will increment by 1 so again 1 is less than or equal to 5 now again it will print you the 1 so likewise it will continue till the condition is going to be false so now let me execute so what's the error here okay because of this extra flower packet right so now let me execute it will print you the 0 1 2 3 4 5 okay so this is how we can uh, use this while loop okay the block of statements repeatedly executed for an un unknown number of times okay for unknown number of times until the specified condition is going to be false okay first we initialized one variable here that is initialization part so then we are going to mention some condition here that is condition so thereafter i am going to print the value okay what is the ith value first okay 0 is less than or equal to 5 condition is true you can print the value of i that is 0 again the i value become 1 incremented by 1 0 plus 1 1 so again this i value become 1 so again i 1 is less than or equal to 5 condition is to print the i value as i uh, sorry 1 so now this i value become 2 like 1 plus 1 2 right so again it will come to here then it will con uh, check the condition 2 is less than or equal to 5 condition true then it will print the ith value as 2 so again 2 plus 1 it will always increment by 1 okay it will always increment by 1 okay it will always increment by 1 so that's why it is keep on going to be executed okay that's why it is keep on going to be executed until the condition is going to be false okay so this is how this while loop will work so now 
so now i am going to reverse okay and now i am going to reverse a number okay so now i am going to reverse a number with the help of while loop okay so reversing numbers with the help of while loop for that first let me initialize a variable in the equals to 5 so then i am going to increment i mean i am going to mention the condition as i is greater than or equal to 0 okay so after that okay after that i am going to print the value of i so now i am going to decrement so now we can see here first 5 is greater than or equals to 0 yes condition is to print the value as 5 first time it will print you 5 so after that it will print you 4 after that it will print you 3 after that it will print you the value 2 after that sorry after that it will print you the value as 1 after that it will print you the value as 0 okay so this is how which is going to be execute now okay let me execute it is going to print the all the values in reverse okay so this is how we are going to be work with the while loop means the block of statements will executed repeatedly unknown number of times okay repeatedly unknown, unknown number of times one second guys i will be on mute
sorry guys actually i kept an order for uh, our pet so that's why that amazon guy came and uh, he delivered the product so that's why i went to ground floor to receive that order sorry for the interruption so now where we are yeah just now we discussed about while loop okay so where we can have uh, unknown number of times okay we need to iterate right so that's why we are going to use this while loop until that condition is going to be false so now we will see do while loop okay so now we will see the do while loop okay if we are using do while loop means it is must and should provide while at the end of do loop okay so we have to must and should provide while at the end of do loop okay so that is about uh, do while loop okay so that is about do while loop okay the name itself it is telling do while loop okay must and should provide while at the end of do loop okay so that is about the last conditional st iteration statement called do while loop first you can do this one based upon the do so you can execute the while loop okay so so that's all it for now so so far we discussed about what are the conditional statement and what is a conditional statement and what are the different statements we can have inside this conditional statements that is if conditional and switch conditional so after that we discussed about iteration statements uh, what are the different kinds of iteration statements we can have and also what is a iteration statement so inside that we discussed about uh, different kinds of implementation of for loop okay so as we discussed here so how many ways we can uh, define this for loop okay so we discussed we can define uh, this for loop without having any initialization part and also without having any condition part and also without having any incremental part so there are these are the different ways to uh, implement this for loop okay so later we discussed about while loop so after that we discussed about do while loop the name itself it is telling first do the condition so then we are going to implement the while loop okay so that is all about this today tutorial so please drop a like if you like this video and also please don't forget to watch this video till the end and also please share this video to your friends or colleagues so that they will also learn about these statements in java and also your share will helps this video to recommend for more people okay so sorry guys uh, sorry for the interruption for uh, two or five minutes okay i'm extremely sorry so until then take care everyone we will meet with our next video in coming days that's all it for now guys signing off selenium tech automation bye guys thank you